Folks, welcome back to 3Zen. Bubble here. So, as I've mentioned in the, in the past, 3Zen was a uh, social room there in the 560th, there at uh, Randolph, Hangar 12. Now you've got the address. And we would gather there for formal or informal activities, more often than not the uh, informal side of the house. And uh, early in the evening, the beer began to flow, then the stories came. And, oh goodness, were they, were they great stories. Most often affiliated with flying, but on occasion we would digress. And at, that at this juncture, shout out to Ron, because I'm going to digress here for a moment or two. Uh, that being said, when I went through school at Bowling Green in Ohio, we had this kid that uh, was a commuter, and, we, and I was a commuter. We would meet down in the uh, commuter room to, to hang out, play cards, and whatnot. Study never, never entered my mind. Anyway, this guy had a, a minor speech impediment, and that kind of kept him out of ROTC. But he was just a great guy just the same. I've often wondered whatever happened to him. As it turns out, his junior year, going into his senior year, he decided to uh, look for a job to help facilitate his uh, financial burden of going through uh, college. Now, I'm a, I am going to digress here. When I went through school in Bowling Green, 1964 to 1968, it cost me $6,700. I don't think you could buy a parking pass for that today. But anyway, let's get back to the story. So this guy decides to go look for a job, and um, he eventually finds him way, his, his way into a Sears store. And he goes in and talks to the uh, manager, and the manager asks him, he says, can I help you? And he says, yes. He says, I'd like to, to see if I could get a job as a salesman. And the uh, manager kind of listens to him, and he's a little bit alarmed. He says, well, he says, we really don't have any openings now. Well, sir, he says, I could really use the money. And he says, I would be a great salesman. I just know it. Well, he was kind of convincing, so the manager decided, why not? Let's see, let's see uh, how it works. We'll give you a, a trial here for a couple of weeks, and then we'll go from there. Oh, sir, that would be so great. He says, I really appreciate it. So they said, uh, this manager said, tell you what, we're going to start you out in, in the uh, sporting goods department. Oh, sir, he says, that's really great. I love sporting goods. So they put him in the sporting goods and kind of kept an eye on him. And after the first week, they started seeing a, a little bit of bounce in sales there. And then they watched him the second week. And in the beginning of the second week, they see, saw an even greater um, bounce in sales, uh, the curve just beginning to climb. So this manager goes over to assistant manager. He says, have you been watching what this kid's doing? He says, yeah. He says, really kind of phenomenal. We haven't had uh, those sales and sporting goods in years. I wonder what, he, what his technique is. So he said, well, he says, listen, next time a customer comes in, let's hop in the aisle next to him and listen in. So they kept an eye on him, and pretty soon this uh, customer came in. They saw him talking to our friend, and so these two managers snuck over to the aisle um, adjacent to where he was and started listening in. And the first thing they heard, this kid says, well, he says, since you're going fishing this weekend, he says, uh, we got these stakes to beer fishing poles on sale. And he said, these are beauties. He says, these things are just really sweet. He says, uh, he says, you might want to think about one of those. And this guy says, well, he says, raise a good point. I'll take one. And he says, and, and now that you have this new fishing pole, he said, you probably could use one of these new reels we have. Now, these are so smooth, he says, the line never snags, he said, it's just, it's got a smooth motion to it. And the guy said, well, he says, fishing pole without a reel is kind of useless. Go ahead and tag it on. Okay, sir, he says, now, what's your tackle look like these days? And the guy said, I haven't been in that tackle box for years. He said, well, sir, he says, I, I would hate to see you go out there and not have the best tackle to use. So he ends up selling them a, quite a line of tackle. And he says, now you got this tackle. He says, do you know where your tackle box is? And the guy says, you know, I'm not so, so sure. 
Well, 30, we have the tackle box that's on sale. It holds everything you got plus a little more if you decide you want to get more into it. The guy says, okay. He says, I'll take the tackle box. And well, sir, he says, do you have any waiters? The guy says, no, I never, never had waiters before. My, oh, sir. He said, once you catch a fish all around the Thor, he says, you're going to want to go out a little further and get the bigger fish. He said, got some real lunkers out there. He says, well, you raise a good point. So he bought a pair of waiters. He says, now, he said, once you get done with the, the fish near the Thor, he says, I've got something you're going to love. He says, we got these new fishing boats. He says, this is a beauty. He says, it's a 16 foot. It's on sale. It's all aluminum. He says, it's a real beauty. He says, you can get a little further out and get them big ones out there. The guy says, boy, I've always wanted a boat. So he ends up buying this boat. He says, and by the way, sir, he says, it comes with this nice trailer. He says, you'll have a lot of fun with it. So he sells them the boat. And of course, as the story goes along, he sells them the engine too. So these two managers are just beside themselves watching this guy's technique. So as he's about to ring it up, he says, you know, sir, he said, you got a, quite an investment here as I ring this up. He says, it'd be a thing just to go up that lake for one day. He says, we got these Eddie Bauer tents on sale and, and camping gear. He says, lend some thought to that. He says, you could spend the week up a weekend up there. And he says, man, you could come home with just a load of fish. So the guy bought the um, Eddie Bauer tent and um, the accessories with it. And he said, oh, he says, I almost forgot. He said, you have a cooler? The guy says, yeah, but the cooler's really old. He went, look at these coolers. He said, these are beauties. And he showed him a, a nice Coleman cute cooler. And he said, I'll take one of those. He says, wife and I have been thinking about buying a cooler for a long time anyway. Okay, you get the idea. So this guy ends up with a fishing pole, tackle box, the whole nine yards. And uh, as, the, uh, as this friend of ours was ringing the, the bill up, he looked at it and he said, man, he said, you look like you're going to have a lot of fun with this stuff. And the guy looked at the bill and he says, yeah, he says, uh, that's not too bad. I've been thinking about um, this anyway. So he rings him up and uh, the guy takes his receipt and his... Uh, everything he bought and they start working it out to the car. When they get the car loaded, kid comes in and these two managers jump out from behind the uh, aisle over next door and they are just ecstatic. And they go up and they're patting them on the back and they said, that's one of the most brilliant salesman jobs we've ever seen. And he says, that guy came in to buy a lousy fishing pole and you ended up selling him the whole nine yards. And the guy, the student looks at him and says, well, sir, he says, that's not quite accurate. And the manager says, what do you mean? He says, well, he says, the guy came in to buy a box of tampons. And I told him, sir, since you're not going to be doing anything this weekend, if you thought about going fishing. <laughs> so, anyway, this is Bobo Base Gear. Stop.